Baker, the chair of the NARSIG, but his term runs out uh, at this, uh, this conference. And we have opened up the nomination. Um, on the 10th of August, and we closed the nomination on the 7th of September. Um, but we didn't receive any nominations in this period. So there, there are not going to be any elections in this session here at APNIC 46. But we will reopen the nominations for the next conference in um, Apricot and APNIC 47. Uh, and we hope you know, uh, someone will be interested from the NAR community to um, nominate themselves for the chair position. The next time uh, when we have elections, uh, it will be for uh, chair and co-chair, because uh, Zen's uh, term will be finishing at the next election, so uh, next conference. So it will be for the co-chair and chair. So I really don't need to go through the slides, because uh, it just explains uh, the responsibilities you know, um, and the election procedures. But since we are not going to have elections, it's, there's no point for me to go through the slides. Um, so I'll hand over back to Zen uh, to move forward with the agenda. But um, I really, I mean, it's really up to you. But I would encourage uh, to put in the nominations for the next uh, next time when we open the uh, um, um, chair and co-chair nomination forms for the next conference. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Okay, everyone, because uh, Shram's uh, term ends, ends at this meeting, so first uh, let's thanks for his contribution for the community. Okay. Now um, we will um, begin our announcing session. First, we will have seven, uh, we have, sorry, we have six updates from our NRs. And uh, after our updates, uh, Guangliang will make a report about the NRO resource status. First, uh, I will make the scenic update. The, scen the scenic update will cover the list of uh, aspects, internet development channel membership uh, growth, and the IP and S allocations, training progr program, and the, the IPv6 deployment in China. Uh, first, I, uh, I want to share some data about China, uh, internet development in China. CINIC uh, released the latest report on the internet development uh, in China on August the 20th. According to the report, uh, inter internet users in China had reached uh, 802 million. The internet penetra uh, penetration rate had reached 57.7% uh, 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 compared with the that at the end of 2017, with a growth of 3.8%. And the mobile internet users in China has reached 788 million. The penetration is 98.3% of the total internet users. Uh, the, the, the proportions are uh, using mobile, in, mo mobile phone to access the internet continues to rise. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, membership uh, growth of Scenic. Uh, at, uh, by the end of August 2018, we have uh, 1,395 members uh, the industry covered, covered uh, ISP, IDC, 
ICT, uh, cloud computing, and uh, e-commerce, transportation, uh, energy manufacture, education, and other industries. Now let's have a look at the IP and the AS allocations. By the end of August 2018, CNIC has allocated more than uh, 330,000 uh, slash 24 IPv4 addresses and uh, more than 14,000 slash 32 IPv6 uh, address and uh, Uh, about 50% of our members now uh, hold IPv6 address. Uh, we observed that uh, on one hand, there are still many demands for IPv IPv4 address uh, because you know the net the network infrastructure of in China is still based on IPv4. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, operators and uh, large organizations. Um, are actively ap applying for IPv6 uh, address to cope with their shortage, shortage of IPv4 address to su support their new business su uh, such as the IoT. Uh, after the uh, Chinese government uh, issued the IPv6 action plan at the end of uh, 2017, uh, the application for IPv6 address uh, became more active. The proportion of our members uh, who applied for IPv6 keep rising. About the S number, uh, we have allocated more than 900 S members. Uh, in July, we, we had a workshop uh, in Beijing, Jessica we conducted a wonderful training about IPv6 and RPKI. More than seven, 70 uh, engineers attended, and uh, this workshop uh, achieved a notable result. And uh, we plan to conduct another IPv6 training uh, in November, and uh, we will continue the training program in the 2019. Uh, finally, I'd like to share uh, with you the IPv6 uh, department in China. Uh, by August uh, uh, 2018, uh, China holds uh, more than 27,000 uh, slash 32 IPv6 addresses, uh, which account, uh, account for 11.4% uh, of the global allocated. Uh, advertised IPv6 address accounts for 20.8% uh, of the total allocated in China and 5.1% uh, of the global ad advertised. Uh, we have, we have uh, 1,484 uh, S number in China. Uh, 163 of them advertise IPv6 addresses. Uh, the, the ratio is 11 percent. Uh, next, I'd like to uh, talk about uh, IPv6 deployment in China from four aspects. Uh, first, the network uh, in infrastructure. Uh, three Tier 1 operators in China China Telecom, China Unicom, and uh, China Mobile have finished their core network, Metropolitan Air Network and Access Network uh, IPv6 upgrade. And uh, they have finished uh, the LTE network uh, IPv6 transition uh, in 26 provinces, uh, covers more than 100 cities. Um, the international IPv6 bandwidth uh, is uh, <coughs> 70 gigabits, and uh, the 
symmetric inter interconnection IPv6 bandwidth is more than three terabits. Now they have assigned IPv6 address to more than uh, 70 million users. In, term, in terms of uh, application infrastructure, the Taiwan uh, operators business system, operation system, support system uh, uh, have supported IPv6, and their large IDCs IDC have supported IPv6 too. And some CDS and uh, cloud enterprise uh, have finished their IPv6 uh, transition and uh, uh, providing IPv6 commercial service. Uh, regarding the internet applications, uh, the portal website and uh, some uh, service system of the Taiwan operators have finished the IPv6 transition, and uh, the leading internet enterprise uh, have made out the IPv6 transition plan for the uh, applications which have large numbers, large numbers of users and traffic, and some transition work has uh, is being carried out now. Um, last, the terminals, the new purchase terminals, uh, fixed or mobile, have supported uh, IPv6 uh, 100 percent, and most of them support IPv4. <coughs> Uh, v6 door stacked by default. We believe uh, the IPv6 uh, deployment in China will make a rapid, uh, rapid progress in the near future. That's all I want to share with you today. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, any question? Uh, my name is Benjamin from IDNIC. This is good presentation and we from Indonesia want to learn much from China maybe about how to implement IP version 6. Mm -hmm. Especially in, uh, for uh, uh, cellular or maybe uh, from, uh, for the application services. My question is, uh, uh, what's, what, what are your strategy to make the IP version 6 uh, implemented uh, well in the certain area, especially for the uh, cellular uh, operator and for the application provider. Thank you. As I know, the uh, for the mm, now the new uh, new purchase the cell phone uh, has uh, mm, all uh, support IPv6 and uh, uh, all the, the Taiwan operators have uh, assigned IPv6 address to the cell phones. I can also share some information. Uh, as I know, oh, sorry, I'm Jessica Shen uh, from Scenic. Uh, as I know, the cellular operators uh, are quite active in uh, IPv6 deployment, such uh, China and uh, China Mobile. Uh, they have uh, deployed, uh, they have started deploying IPv6 process several years ago, and, uh, and currently they have largely uh, you uh, applied IPv6 addresses and uh, uh, applications on their mobile network and LTE. Uh, so I think uh, uh, government uh, or uh, non-profit uh, organizations like Zenic uh, haven't uh, had to uh, put much, you know, difficulties 
uh, have uh, much difficulties in promoting IPv6 deploy uh, deployment in uh, in cellular cellular um, operators. And uh, we, we uh, and uh, I think uh, as we uh, uh, as others also have the problems. We also had uh, deployment problems with uh, application uh, companies. Uh, the the leading the leading three uh, content providers in China uh, are not uh, you not. Uh, not very active in IPv6 deployment before, but uh, uh, just after the government <coughs> issued the IPv6 national plan uh, at the end of last year, the, uh, the top uh, content provider and application providers uh, have uh, actually working uh, on this area, and some of them have completed the IPv6 upgrading uh, for their websites, and uh, some work is still uh, carrying on. Thank you. Uh, Vic Kalag. <laughs> I have a minor clarification about the data. I think in slides number two, uh, it said, the, the PowerPoint says that the penetration of internet users is 802 million, and that is approximately, I think, second slide. Previous. Uh, previous slide. Previous. Second, I think. Oh, yeah, that one. That one, please. Okay, I'm quite confused with this uh, data. <coughs> uh, there are 802 million internet users uh, or, a or a penetration of 57.7%, while the mobile internet users is 788 million, and it is 98.3. Do you mean that 788 over the total population of China? Uh, and uh, also with the 802 million? Yeah, most of the internet users uh, uh, surf the internet uh, by the smartphone. Oh, okay. Yeah, I am Andre from IDNIC. Um, with a response from Jessica, when you mentioned that the IP physics is deployed because of the IP physics national plan, right? So, is there any benefit for the companies uh, when they deploy the IP physics? So, some company in Indonesia, they usually are a bit reluctant to implement the IP physics because they don't see the benefit. I mean, uh, because they have to replace a lot of equipments, right? So sometimes they think that if I have to replace all of equipment, it would be so expensive on my site, and I don't see the, the much benefit that I can get from the IP physics. Other than, you know, because when you mentioned it, this is a national plan, so every company must have IP physics. I believe that that's the case in China, right? Is that, is that such thing? Thank you. Uh, for this question, uh, in one hand, the, the, the companies under, uh, including the application providers under this national plan, they can get some uh, supporting policies from the government. Uh, but uh, I, I, I uh, sorry, I don't know the exact uh, benefits they will get, but uh, it's sure they can get some supporting policies. Uh, maybe not only the fund, but uh, also some uh, some 
some some policies. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, as I know, uh, uh, the government has put uh, uh, some uh, the have give them uh, have have give them uh, uh, how to uh, it's a um I don't think they will get a punishment, but uh, uh, it's uh, the government uh, has given some incentives to them, uh, and uh, uh, as a as a as a leading uh, providers, uh, they want to you know uh, have a good uh, market share uh, as well as a, a, a good example uh, in the industry. So they will put focus on IPv6 deployment, uh, uh, following the government's encouragement. And uh, I, I think uh, after I think uh, uh, the after the leading ones have uh, have uh, com have complete or have started the deployment, uh, the smaller ones uh, will just uh, catch up. Any question? Uh, thank you, Jessica. Now I'd like to invite Owen from Vinic to make the presentation. Okay, good, uh, good afternoon everyone. I'm Oing from Vietnam, from Vietnam. And today I would like to uh, share with you about an uh, update about Vietnam. Yes. Uh, first of all, I, I think it's the slide for the new member coming to Phoenix uh, 46. And I, I think uh, all the NIR will know us. We uh, take care about the, not only uh, IP address, but also we take care about the .vn and internet exchange point in Vietnam and other. We uh, also the standing committee of national IPv6 source. And uh, I, I would like to update about the uh, focus on the IP address activity in uh, the maybe uh, last last year. Uh, we have just uh, have uh, the meeting, OPM meeting, in uh, July. We have uh, we in this year we focus on uh, IPv6. I think we have just a lot of questions about IPv6, and also in Vietnam we would like to focus IPv6. Uh, I think the reason why I we focus IPv6, I will tell you later in the next slide, and I now I will start with the OPM meeting. And uh, we uh, uh, also uh, have uh, some uh, presentation from the uh, um, ISP from uh, from uh, as uh, the anti authority of uh, Ministry uh, of Information and Communication, and also we have uh, the special presentation from APNIC and it's from Anna. Uh, I, I would like to thank Anna and thank APNIC for your standing. Yeah. And uh, we are also uh, uh, is the, the as activity for from APN Green help us to uh, have uh, the uh, the training for the topic the routing to yeah uh, the the trainer from APN come, come came to Vietnam is Tasi he's uh, very friendly and also he uh, uh, had a good activity and a good uh, technical. Uh, no list. We uh, he said we heard a lot of uh, information about the routing for not only the for not only for ISP but also some uh, government agency, all the good soft, uh, the good soft. And in the Vietnam, Vietnam, in uh, we has the 
um, conference for the IH. And uh, today, uh, this, this year, we would like to thank for ABNIC, ISO, ABNIC, Facebook, and uh, some ISP uh, come to Vietnam and have uh, some presentation. I, I, I lose some, uh, uh, some friends from uh, ABNIC, uh, Sunny from ABNIC, and other people. And I would like to thank you. And uh, if you uh, uh, would like to know more about the uh, Vietnamese note, and uh, you can go to the website. You can see uh, on the slide. And uh, main activity we focus on, uh, yeah, in the past past uh, months, uh, you can see we, we have a lot of activity for IPv6. We uh, uh, have uh, some present for the some ISP, uh, some organization have a good deploy IPv6 in last year, and every year we have uh, the same activity like that. And uh, we have a Vietnam IPv6 day on uh, May 2018, and other a lot of activity for training IPv6 for government agency and ISP, and also we uh, keep uh, keep uh, promote IPv6 via the um, yeah inf a lot of information give uh, to ISP to other end user and uh, other um, IP member that's and uh, I would tell you why we uh, focus IV6 because we uh, we will finish the uh, Vietnam IPv6 action plan in next year. So we are developing the evaluation form as the plan, and uh, we uh, we will uh, the organize we uh, evaluate the themselves and inform us, and also the evaluate form we would like to help us to know the organization complete the plan or not. And some other activity for the uh, certificates for ISO 27,000 uh, uh, 27, for the national DNS and uh, IH and IDC, we, uh, we take care for in Vietnam. And other the MOU, we start with the department of information and communication in some the province, and other many activity for domain and IH and uh, IP address. And now I would like to share you some the I uh, update about delegation from uh, uh, on on behalf of NIR in Vietnam, and you can see on the chart. Yeah, it's the number of IPv6 in Vietnam, and up to now we have the uh, maybe nearly. Uh, 16, 16 million IPv4 address. And uh, at the IPv6 is the, um, I think it's the number of IPv6 delegation is uh, increasing. And uh, up to now we have uh, um, more than 100 members having IPv6. Uh, it's the, the chart for uh, IP members the increasing, yeah. And the AS number, up to now, we have uh, the 360 member IPv6, uh, IP. And uh, I will share you the number for the uh, use of IPv6 in Vietnam. And up to now, we have uh, maybe uh, near uh, about 60% for IPv6. And we are very, uh, very happy because we had a good result and the uh, plan will coming to uh, finish next year. And we hope that the number will increase more and uh, roughly in next year. And uh, I, uh, now I, I saw you why we had a good result. Because we had uh, some the ISP, the huge ISP deploy IPv6 for VNPT, FPT, Vietten, and uh, the um, number uh, some IS, ICP deploy IPv6 uh, like via FPT online, <coughs> and uh, uh, and finally I will tell you about the upcoming activity from VNIC. And uh, as I have just told you about um, IPv6, we focus the IPv6 because uh, um, it's the very important for. Uh, Task force for um, uh, government agency, uh, and for uh, just uh, for 
I visit that spot, we would like to finish the, uh, the plan with a good number of IVC, so we will to uh, publish the evaluation form for the every uh, entity yeah, in Vietnam. In, uh, maybe we have been finished the research uh, at the end of this year. And as an uh, activity for IVC, we continue to have a lot of training for government agency, for ISP, and other organizations would like to have uh, the training for IVC. And also, we had to uh, continue with the paid um, working visit to ISP, to ICP, and mobile operator in next month. It's the, uh, a good activity we use the every year to go to directly with the leader of the ISP so we can uh, help them to uh, develop IVBC. And uh, as the uh, activity, uh, as you know, we uh, take care for the VN, so we continue to uh, um, the cooperation with uh, in um, North VN. So we, at uh, the same time, in the APN46, we continue with the court, training court for domain for the uh, LANIC, yeah, in Lao. And uh, as uh, we issued the report on Vietnam Internet Resources in, uh, this year, and uh, finally, other activity we will continue is, is the in international conversation activity and other activity in uh, .vn, IPS REST, and uh, VNH, and Starstone. And thank you so much. <laughs> is there any question? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, now I'd like to invite the team from TWNIC to make the presentation. Uh, hello everyone, uh, I'm Tim from TWNIC. Uh, today I will uh, do some uh, brief uh, TWNIC update to you. And uh, the outline is below. Uh, the first is the <coughs> statistics of the TWNIC's IP members. And uh, the second one is the TWNIC's activity and the training programs. And the third one is the uh, conclusion and future works. Okay, uh, first the the statistic of uh, TWNIC IP members. Uh, we TWNIC uh, have uh, 86 members uh, now and increased uh, 24 uh, new member this year. And uh, uh, they provide a uh, different service type and uh, to the entire customer and uh, uh, including the fixed network and uh, the mobile network. <coughs> and this is the IPv4 uh, address allocation. TWNIC has allocated uh, 131,798 uh, uh, 24 IPv4 addresses now. And uh, the IPv4 application uh, growing slightly in this year and increased uh, uh, 96 uh, 24 IPv4 address. Uh, for IPv6 address, uh, we have uh, allocated uh, 2,363 uh, uh, 32 IPv6 addresses. And this year, uh, we uh, increased the 16 uh, slash 22 IPv6. And uh, most of the uh, TWNIC IP members uh, have obtained the IPv6 address now. And uh, we hold the uh, 2018 TWNAC and the uh, 30th uh, TWNIC IP open policy meeting uh, on the June 21st and the uh, 21st and 22nd. And the keynote speech is uh, IPv6 trend, Taiwan, Asia, Pacific, and the worldwide, an update from uh, 2014 uh, by the Paul Wilson the direct general from EPINIC. And the second keynote is the uh, future challenge of internet uh, is from the, uh, by the Fred Baker, 
uh, is the co-chair IPv6 Operations Working Group IETF. And uh, uh, list all the session uh, topic and include uh, cooperation SIG, <coughs> policy SIG, IPv6 deployment next generation, network technology, and uh, network operation technology, cybersecurity experience, sharing, and so on. Uh, so you may find more details uh, on this uh, website. Okay, also uh, we hold a joint training with the APNIC. Uh, we have the IPv6 workshop on the May 30 and uh, June 1st. And there are uh, 40 attendees uh, to join this uh, workshop. And uh, the lecturer is uh, Mr. Hahi and uh, Mr. Anurag uh, from APNIC. And uh, uh, this uh, technical workshop is uh, made up of lectures and hands-on lab exercise uh, to understand the concept of IPv6 protocol architecture. It's addressing structure and the design issues when planning for IPv6 deployment focusing on the IP core network. And this course uh, includes a considerable uh, practical work based on the IPv6 and uh, we use the uh, Cisco IOS router configuration command. Okay, the next one is uh, type, uh, Taiwan IPv6 uh, user availabilities. Uh, Taiwan IPv6 user availability is uh, 0.46 percent in the end of 2017, and 17.48 uh, percent in September uh, this year. Uh, the growth rate is uh, 3,700 percent. And uh, TWNIC uh, has uh, uh, built a RPKI test bay. Uh, first, uh, we would like to thank uh, George Michelson and uh, Tom Harrison uh, of EpiNIC and the Taiji of JPNIC. Uh, they came to Taiwan on uh, May 28 to 29 and uh, June, June uh, 20th, respectively. Uh, they shared share some uh, their RPKI experience and some uh, technical discussion uh, with the TWNIC engineers. Uh, so uh, according to their uh, experience and uh, the te technical discussion, uh, TWNIC has built the uh, certification authority system and uh, signed a testbed uh, CA certification with EPINIC on June. And uh, uh, EPINIC uh, assigned uh, all the TWNIC uh, certified resource to TWNIC on the CA server. And uh, uh, TWNIC also uh, built a RPKI management system for our members to fill their own resource and uh, manage, the, uh, manage uh, the role on August. Sorry, it's a typo. Uh, this is our uh, RPKI architecture. Uh, it shows the main component element and uh, the interactions. Uh, the uh, TWNIC CA server, uh, we can uh, do the, uh, we cite the uh, certificate with the EPINIC CA, and uh, uh, EPINIC CA will assign the resource to the TWNIC CA server, and it will uh, keep it on the uh, RPKI database, okay. And uh, we also have the TWNIC uh, resource management system, the TWNIC registry DB, and uh, uh, we have the uh, management system uh, retrieve the member ID, IPv4, IPv6, and SN uh, uh, list resource uh, from the resource management system. And we will compare it to the uh, TWNIC CA, the IPv4, IPv6, SN uh, list uh, information and uh, we will show to uh, uh, list on this uh, management system. So our user, our member, end user, they can uh, create the role uh, according to their, uh, their own resource, okay. And uh, after they create the role, and the uh, TWNIC CA server will uh, uh, sync the results to the rsync repository 
And uh, we have also built a validator so uh, the router can query by the port 323 and uh, uh, to verify this uh, information is correct. Uh, this is some uh, screenshot from the uh, TWNIC RPQI management system. So uh, it's uh, very easy to use to for the uh, members. They uh, just uh, log into the system and uh, they, they can uh, review the resource, uh, include the uh, IPv4, IPv6, S number. And uh, they can uh, management their, uh, manage their uh, role. Uh, they can uh, build their uh, uh, existing uh, role and uh, add a new one, uh, modify it, or delete it. Okay, the last one is the conclusion of future work. Uh, TWNIC uh, have the 24 more new members uh, this year, and uh, uh, we built the RPKI CA uh, test plate environment, validator, management system, and the plan to provide RPKI service to the uh, TWNIC members this year. And we will uh, hold a routing uh, workshop uh, by the end of this year and uh, IPv6 activity this year. Okay, and uh, welcome to attend the IPv6 uh, readiness measurement buff tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, any question? Okay, thank you, Tim. Uh, now I'd like to invite Pierre Aki from JPNIC to make the presentation. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Hiroki Kawabata uh, from JPNIC. Uh, I'm going to talk to uh, you about JPNIC Operate. Uh, I'm glad to uh, have this opportunity to share with you about our activities and statistics. Uh, this is a, a brief outline of uh, our presentation. Uh, first, I'll talk uh, about uh, our activities. Uh, next is uh, statistics. Uh, first part is our activities. Uh, today, uh, I'll talk about four topics. Uh, why one topic is IPv6. Uh, in Japan, uh, there are several organizations to work uh, for uh, promo promoting IPv6 adoption. Uh, we collaborate uh, with uh, the uh, IPv4 exhaustion task force uh, in Japan. Uh, in this task force, uh, we are providing uh, information uh, by a web page uh, as a public relations. Uh, Internet Association Japan, uh, one of the members of uh, this task force uh, is uh, focused on uh, promoting IPv6 deployment uh, in rural area. Uh, their IPv6 deployment committee uh, held a regional IPv6 summit, uh, uh, summit a few times uh, in uh, one year uh, since uh, 2023. Uh, we also collaborate this event and hold uh, the IPv6 technical hands-on seminar. Uh, JPNIC provides more knowledge for ISP uh, technical operators. Uh, we uh, held IPv6 technical hands-on seminar, uh, collaborating with uh, regional ISPs and community. Uh, next slide, uh, next topic is RPKI. Uh, this service was launched uh, three years ago. Uh, now we should uh, successfully resource certificates and uh, uh, about uh, 248 IPv4 ROAs. The covering, covering, uh, the covering ratio for IPv4 prefix is 3.3%. Uh, IPv6 uh, coverage is more big than IPv4. Uh, this trend has been uh, mostly unchanged. Uh, to get uh, interested in RPKI, uh, we hold RPKI training course. Uh, in this training, uh, participants uh, learn about RPKI a concept and registration procedure using uh, our uh, hands-on web. Uh, in this period, uh, we have some opportunity to share uh, our experience to, uh, for the deployment RPKI service. Uh, we made presentations uh, about RPKI at TWNIC IPOPM and uh, VNIX NOG. Uh, 
event access norms. Uh, next topic is uh, Japanese group policy meeting. Uh, it was held in June uh, this year, and this uh, this meeting uh, was moderated by Japan Open Policy uh, Forum steering, steering team. Uh, this steering team is independent organization from JPNIC. Uh, this time, uh, there are three policy proposals and some information sessions. Uh, this slide shows meeting agenda. Uh, these policy proposals are aimed to uh, correct opinion from community. Uh, in addition, uh, this open policy meeting, uh, another meeting was held at the end of August. Uh, this meeting is aimed to share uh, the policy proposal at policy signal list and to, to correct uh, opinions from community. Uh, the last top topic is uh, in this part is the engagement with Janog. Uh, there is op operators community such as Janog in, uh, Nanog in Japan. Uh, we call it Janog. Uh, Janog is uh, short for Japan Network Operators Group. Uh, <coughs> uh, Janog is an independent organization from JPNIC and uh, they were established in 1997. Uh, and they are, uh, there are uh, uh, 7,300 mailing subscribers. Uh, some of uh, our staff serves in uh, general committee member. Uh, in some meeting, uh, our staff uh, serve as general group meeting staff, and we open uh, we open onsite help desk at the booth, at our booth. Uh, general meeting uh, uh, held uh, two or three times of each uh, in various uh, city in Japan. Uh, we are used uh, it uh, as an opportunity, opportunity for uh, JPNIC members and uh, allies to meet with JPNIC staff uh, in casual settings. At, uh, in addition to this, uh, at the latest uh, general meeting, uh, we made some presenta presentation uh, about uh, geolocation and fake transfer and fake transfer request and uh, content blocking by ISPs. Uh, I'd like to uh, move on to the next part, uh, intro introduce uh, statistics. This slide shows the statistics, uh, statistics of IP member and resource folder. Uh, IP member in JPNIC is same as LIR in JPNIC. Uh, resource folder is mainly the organization who, assi who be assigned uh, legacy resources. Bagra is a number of uh, IP member. Uh, we have uh, 434 IP members at the end of uh, this August. Uh, 155 members have taken IPv4 only. Uh, 273 members uh, uh, have taken IPv4 and IPv6. Uh, six members have taken IPv6 only. Five graph shows the total number of uh, IP members and resource holder. Uh, about 30 percent of uh, uh, sorry, uh, about 30 percent is IP member, and uh, the rest is the uh, legacy resource holder. Next slide shows IPv4 distribution status. Uh, bar graph is the number of IPv4 address under JPNIC management. Uh, we have managed uh, 387,624 uh, at the end of this August. Uh, after uh, IPv4 exhaustion in uh, 2011, uh, this range has been mostly unchanged. About 40% uh, of IP members have been uh, allocated IPv4 address from last year's state block. <coughs> Pie graph shows the detail of, uh, or details of uh, distribution of IPv4 address. The uh, yellow part is the IPv4 address, uh, which we have delegated to IP member. Uh, it's about 75%. Uh, This slide shows the statistics of IPv6 distribution. Uh, bar graph is the number of IPv6 uh, uh, address under JPNIC management. Uh, we now, uh, uh, we now we have allocated about 7,000 uh, such uh, IPv6 blocks. Uh, in addition to uh, this allocation, uh, this allocation, uh, there are uh, 145 slash four, uh, 48 portable assignment. Uh, line graph uh, is a uh, number of IP members with IPv6 allocations. Uh, now about 63% uh, of IP members have been uh, delegated to IPv6. Uh, next slide shows S number distribution status. Uh, this graph uh, is the total S number which we have assigned. Uh, we have 
I find 22 uh, is number last one, yeah. Uh, this year, uh, mainly we have assigned four by these numbers. Uh, the uh, number of assigned to a, two by this number is a little. The next one is the uh, uh, statistics, uh, statistics of uh, mark, uh, market IPv4 and this number transfer. Uh, we have completed uh, 328 IPv4 transfers and six uh, is number transfer. Uh, uh, transfer. Uh, now we can transfer uh, IPv4 address uh, from uh, to a PNIC, uh, ALIN, a uh, live NCC member. Uh, the uh, number of uh, interregistry transfer uh, is increasing. Uh, we have uh, 17 uh, interregistry transfer uh, after this uh, February. Now uh, we permit S number transfer uh, from one to a PNIC member only. Uh, and uh, there is no uh, complete case for, from uh, APNIC, uh, from uh, two APNIC members. Uh, that's all uh, from us. Thank you. <laughs> Any question? Uh, thank you, Hayaki. Uh, now I'd like to invite. Uh, ID, uh, ID from NNIC to make the presentation. Um, hi, sorry, I'm representing ID from the ID NIC. My name is Andri. Uh, Okay, so yeah, so this is what we have uh, at the moment. So this is basically just the statistic that we have, the assignment of the IP, uh, sorry, the S number. Uh, in 2018, we have the 680. Where's the next slide? Okay. Sorry, should be. to do the practice one. Can you show me the practice one? I need to, yeah, scroll up, scroll up, yeah. That's why. Okay, so this is the our roadmap. <coughs> so this is our uh, current information until February 2018. Uh, we have uh, in total uh, 368 in December 2016. For the ISPN, uh, for the companies, we have 417. And this is our current uh, direct member. We have 836 uh, direct member as per February 2018. So most of them are the internet service provider uh, as the member. Right, so there we go. We have the chart over here. Uh, we have the ISP 33%, corporate and association 46%. Government 11% and education 10%. We aim to uh, increase. We aim to increase the number of the uh, member, uh, especially from other organizations, such as from from the uh, educations we have, because we have potentials uh, like 1,000 universities that can join the uh, IDNIC. So this is the location for the IPv4 that we have. Uh, IDNIC allocations in APNIC is extra large. So in total, we have the forward slash nine. These are the prefix that we have. Uh, total IP address that we uh, have per on February 2018 is uh, 21,400 somethings. And allocations per for direct member, we have 2,292 uh, 2, per block. This is our chart for the uh, allocations for the IPv4. At the moment, we have the 19,110 allocations for the IPv4. Right, and we have this one for the ISP, 2,292 as per February 2018. So it's basically just the starts that we have we see the improvement, the increase in IPv6, and we are aiming more for the IPv6. That's why we have the, quest of, uh, the questions to our colleague from China. 
uh, in China because it's probably driven by the government. In Indonesia, it's a different story because it's driven by the community. So we have to engage more with the communities to, to improve the IPv6. Right, so this is just the assignment. So what next then? This is the most important part in, in our roadmap. Uh, first, we have the who is data quality improvement. So what happened in Indonesia, something like this. This is the, the, the ideal uh, record for the who is that we aim to, right? So this is the, the one that uh, basically how who is supposed to be, right? But the, the reality in, in our who is at the moment is something like this. So sometimes we have some, some problem with the, the, the detail of the information over there, right? Many people actually uh, wanted us to basically give them the, the correct information from the WHOIS. So for example, like this one, descriptions. It should be the name of the company, but we, uh, long time back, we just put it as the internet service provider. Uh, the net name is Andalas Media, but we don't know exactly what the company name is, right? So it's, uh, and the record, something like this is quite a lot in, in our record. That's why we aim to fix this one. No organization name, and then you have another problems. Uh, no lower maintainer and IRT, no abuse mailbox. So it's basically uh, loss of information. So when the authorities came to us, uh, it's a bit difficult for us to, to basically redirect them to the correct information. Like this one, uh, it should be, uh, this, the second opinion should be uh, uh, with, with the, 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 the member itself, right? And sometimes we also have this one, this problem. This is one is quite a lot. We have dead domains, right? So the, the, the name of the ISP has changed or it's basically bankrupt and we still have the allocations, hence no information how to reach them. That's quite troublesome for us. So what we're going to do is uh, we have some plan here. Uh, so basically what we want is we want to fix any invalid uh, information. Like this one, the parent block descriptions, uh, we're definitely gonna change uh, this one into the, the, the ideal one to the correct one. Uh, we also want to create existing member, uh, maintainer and the IRT. So it, we, sh we aim that someone should be held responsible for the uh, correct information. Someone should be held responsible for anything that comes to them. Like for example, if there is a the security incident, something like that. So this is what happened. Uh, sorry, we have some, some problem with the, uh, this one. It should, the arrow should go to this one. So this is what we are going to do. So basically we want to uh, do some, some back-end programming and we do the scanning of all the domains. If we found that the domain is dead and then we, it will be notified in our system, the MaIDNIC, and then send the email to the uh, correspondent, right? If there is no response in 60 day, and then we will mark it as uh, invalid object, right? But if there is a response uh, from the my ID nick or from email, and then we'll go back here again, and basically once they update uh, the information, it will goes back to the uh, start domain. The process will be done uh, using a cron. Uh, we'll do it uh, on daily basis. Right, so we also have something like, oh, sorry, can, can you return one, right one? Okay. This one uh, is basically uh, kind of like, uh, I don't know, it's a, it's, a, it's a score bar, right? So it's a score bar. As long as you have uh, uh, more than 50% of validity of your information, then you'll be so-called uh, active member. But if you have some problem with your score over here, like this one, uh, we will temporarily suspend the, the, the membership, right? So if we cannot reach you as a member uh, and your maximum score is less than uh, 50%, then we will suspend you. Right, so this one for the RDAP and public API. I know this one is not you know, being, being uh, standardized, but we aim to have something like this. So basically what happened is uh, many organizations, especially the authorities, uh, like law enforcement uh, and also the government, they want to know more about the uh, who is record database. So we aim to have something like this. Uh, basically, it's used on, on AirDAP using the JSON. Uh, we'll send the information to the third party, 
basically the authorized third party that can access the information. So rather than goes to uh, our Whois database, they can simply you know, have their own uh, system that can call our API. This is the public API. Uh, not very public, actually. It's uh, only for specific organizations. But yeah, basically, uh, we can have this kind of information uh, directly. So government, law enforcement can have their own system to, to check the record. And this is also the one IP address management to is This is something that we want to achieve. Uh, basically, uh, this is the, 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 the current situations. We have to export and then to import to my identity tools. Uh, and then we want to have it as a, as a, as a plugin in, in the MyIdenic system, and then we want to sync it into the uh, MyIdenic. Right. And the last one is, I think this is the, our current system. So we just have this new system being deployed in 2018. Uh, it's still quite new. Uh, we still have some bugs here and there, uh, but we aim to have the system to do all of this stuff. So basically, this is resource management, right? Uh, it can inform you the, 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 basically your resources, the AS number, and then also the IP addresses. Uh, we can also do the who is update here. Uh, we have the synchronization with the APNIC. At the moment, it's still one way from APNIC to IDNIC, but we aim to have it in two ways, from uh, APNIC to IDNIC and IDNIC to APNIC. And then this one also uh, will help as the identity event. Any event will be informed in here. Uh, also the announcements and the e-voting uh, during the member meeting. Yep, that's all from us. Any questions? Right? No questions? That's good. All right, thank you very much. OK, thank you, Eddie. Now I'd like to invite Jin Yun from Kelly to make the presentation. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm Jin Yun Jo from Kelly. Uh, I'm gonna make a uh, uh, brief update. Uh, let's go. We have uh, a Kaling members uh, consisting of uh, uh, ISPs, independent users. Uh, we have uh, uh, three uh, increase in independent IP users. For the S members, we lost six members. And for the IPv4, we have a uh, one more than 100 uh, uh, million IP people addresses. Uh, we increased uh, Kelly has uh, increased of uh, IP people uh, around uh, 5,736. And for the IP six, uh, we have a uh, one uh, block increase. Uh, slash 32. And in case of, uh, well, uh, IPv6 uh, users or members, out of uh, 265 domestic IP members, 71 members uh, <laughs> allocated uh, IPv6 uh, addresses. Most of, uh, uh, more than half uh, ISP members have uh, allocated uh, IPv6 uh, addresses. However, in case of uh, independent IP users, uh, only small part of uh, uh, users uh, uh, allocated IPv6 addresses, uh, like less than 10%. For the uh, S and uh, numbers, uh, we can record uh, 1,500 uh, ASN numbers uh, uh, for the two byte ASN out of 800 
95, Kelly assigned the one 801 AC numbers. However, in case of, of uh, four byte AC numbers, although Kelly uh, holds the 110 AC numbers, uh, non number was assigned. For the activities, uh, we had a, a policy update. Uh, the policy from APNE to limit IPv4 transfer over five years for the uh, one, 103 uh, slash eight uh, IPv4 uh, pool. So we reflected uh, that uh, policy into the Korean IP policy as of uh, uh, January of, uh, this year. And we are uh, doing regular checkup uh, of uh, IP who is information accuracy. We are doing that by phone or email twice a year for the uh, invoicing annual fee or emergency contact. Uh, there is another issue uh, for the privacy issue. Uh, we are trying to, uh, yeah, substitute the IP administrator's uh, information with the company's official email and uh, uh, phone number. This is uh, related to uh, personal uh, information protection act in Korea. Uh, another uh, activity is uh, synchronizing who is information uh, between APNIC and KISA. KISA is uh, regularly querying APNIC who is information for IP blocks alloc located Kelly. And uh, we are doing that uh, monthly, uh, whether there is uh, some differences. Uh, so we are doing that uh, from 2017. The last item uh, I want to present to you is uh, uh, Kelly hosted the uh, Asia Pacific Internet Governance uh, Academy uh, with uh, ICON, and APNE also was a uh, uh, sponsor. Uh, Sony was there as a uh, yeah, rector, and we had a uh, uh, 32 participants, uh, 16. Uh, economies uh, within Asia Pacific uh, region. I believe uh, this is uh, one of the key uh, initiative uh, to advocate or uh, bring uh, next generation uh, experts on the internet commerce. Thank you. Uh, this is the uh, all the things I have. 감사합니다. Do you have any uh, questions on my presentation? Jessica, I have a, a question about the uh, who is information check. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you mentioned that uh, 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 due to the privacy issue mm -hmm. and uh, the IP administrator's personal contest mm -hmm. is substituted by the company's mm -hmm. email. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, does it happen to all the IP administrators uh, in Korea? In yeah. Korea, yeah. so we're trying to uh, change that to some company information. Mm -hmm. Although uh, some employee of a company still he is uh, he or she is a natural uh, person, mm -hmm. it means uh, that is uh, uh, some protected information. Although he is uh, some employee of some company, so we are trying to uh, change it to like uh, some IP manager uh -huh. or. Yes, manager. Try to not give any uh, personal details. So uh, you mean the official the official email means the uh, emails with the uh, companies. Yeah, try to. Uh, try to. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 감사합니다. Okay, now I'd like to invite Guang Liang for, from APNIC to make the report. Uh, 
hello everyone. It is good to hear the interesting story from which you and I asked. Um, now I would like to share the NRO internet number resource status report with you. This report is uh, prepared by five IRs, and the data in this report is up to 30 June 2018. Green. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's first look at the IPv4. This diagram shows the total 256 slash eight of the IPv4. So what is the status now? So you can see 92 of them delegated before the IR exists, and then. Aplay actually received the 45 delegation from IANA. It is more than any other IRs. And you can also see there is some special technical reservation down there. And let's look at the IPv4 available space in each IR pool. You know the IANA pool was finished in 2011. After seven years, and how many IPv4 fee space still available in each IR pool? You can see these pictures. And APNA is about 30% of the final slash A is still in the pool at the end of uh, June this year. And you can see FNIC has been more, about 60%, and WebNCC have about half of a slash eight, and Lednik is about just more than 10% of the slash eight. And Iron basically they don't have uh, regular space. They have reserved a slash 10 for IPv6 uh, development. So some of the members, they still apply that space through I, uh, Aaron. And let's see the IPv4 delegation by year in each IR. Since 2000, Eight to 2018. In the last 10 years, you can see the IPv4 delegation is decreasing. So it was reached to the peak in 2010 and 2011. And then after that, the IPv4 delegation is keep decreasing. And after this um, V4 uh, pool, in the central IANA pool is one now, and then all the NIRs, or, or all the IRs, like a registry on IPv4 uh, delegation. And later, we have IPv4 transfer policy. So let's look at the transfer status. And this one is the intra IR transfer. This means transfers between, uh, inside the IRs. This is the IPv4 transfer by year inside each IR region. From this graph, you can see the transfer actually take up since 2000. 14, 15, 16 to 18 is quite increased. Um, this is the number of transfers in each IR region. And let's look at the total size of the transfer inside each IR region. You probably think APNA 
is the most active transfer region, but in fact it's not. You can see our region actually transfer more IPv4 inside the region. In 2015 and 17, they actually transfer more than two slash eight of space each year. Uh, move on to the inter-IR transfer. So since uh, IPv4 transfer started, we, long, we start in, with inside in the APLIC region, and then later, Avon has inter-IR transfer policy. So we can transfer IPv4 between APLIC and Avon. And later, WebNCC also have inter-IR transfer policy. Then we start transfer IPv4 with WebNCC as well. So now, APNIC, Avon, WebNCC has inter-IR transfer policy. So between these three IRs, we transfer IPv4 adjust space. And FNIC and LANIC doesn't have uh, inter-IR transfer policy yet. So there's no inter-IR transfer between uh, with uh, FNA and Netnik at this stage. You can also see that Avon actually the main source of the IPv4 are just, they have transferred more than 200 case to APNIC, and APNIC transfer back only 20. And they also transfer more than 100 to weapon CC and the weapon CC transfer about 30 back to Avon. So the main transfer is out from Avon region to other region. But we have two way transfer, so we can still see the numbers between two IRs. And let's look at the total size of transfer between the IRs. Same. You can see Avon actually transfer more IPv4 adjust out to other region. We APNIC receive 16 million of IPv4 adjust from Avon region. And also Avon transfer the 8 million of IPv4 adjust to weapon CC. Okay, move on to the IPv6. Uh, let's look at the overview of the IPv6 space. This is the all IPv6 address space. And we choose the slash three as global unicast address for delegations to IRs. You can see at the beginning in the first only used one slash uh, 12, the yellow round is for delegation before 2006. So all the delegation is from that one slash 12 before 2006. And in 2006, uh, IANA delegated slash 12 to each of the IRs, you can see that uh, table up there. So it lists all the range to each of the IRs. And so far, the slant of the IR come back to IANA asked for IPv6 space. And you can see the delegation to IR, uh, IRs is very tiny compared to the whole IPv6 address space. And let's look at the yearly delegation from the IRs in the last 10 years. We can also see the increase of the IPv6 delegations compared actually with the decrease of the IPv4 delegation in the last 10 years. And this is the total size of the IPv6 
allocation in each IIL region. WebNCC actually allocated more IPv6 compared to other IRs. And I also make direct IPv6 assignment to end users. So this is the graph showing the yearly delegation for the last 10 years. And here's the total IPv6 assignment uh, from each IR. Uh, uh, IR. So let it actually assign more IPv6 space. And let's look at how many percent of members have IPv6 so far. You can see APNA is actually reached to 60% of a member have IPv6 in last month. This the presentation data is up to 30 of June. So it was just uh, under 60%, but now it's reached it over 60% in the APNIC region. Finally, let's look at the AS numbers. This is the overview of the all AS numbers. We have 16-bit. Uh, AS number and 32-bit AS numbers. The 16-bit AS number we also call 4 by AS number. It's the old AS number. Then IANA pool is one, one out, so they are dedicated to all to the IRs. You can see this is the status of the old AS number. But we have plenty of 32-bit AS numbers. Uh, this is the yearly delegation of the AS number in the last 10 years in each IR region. You can see that 32-bit AS number delegation is more in recent years, since uh, 2008. And this is the total AS number delegation by the IRs, uh, you can see Aaron and Weapon CC delegate more AS number than other regions. Uh, if you want to look at this presentation or the statistic, <coughs> you can always go to NRO statistic website. And also those uh, IANA statistic is, you can also go to the IANA website to look at those statistic data. Um, any questions? Yes, please. Uh, when the IPv6 is being deployed, yeah. the can you come to the mic? So <laughs> we have yeah. uh, limited time to get into it. Yeah. Uh, when you, when uh, clients deploy the IPv6, uh, sometimes we have the questions. Yeah. Is it only a BGP peering? Right, because the case in, in Indonesia, we found that, okay, we, we established the IPv6 peering, right? But then their client, you know, inside, like the servers and then uh, the clients, they don't deploy the IPv6 up to the client level. So it's only at the peering basis on the core router that they have the IPv6 peering, mm -hmm. but not, you know, mm -hmm. not the end users. That's yeah. many, many cases happen in Indonesia. So yeah. how do, okay. you know, we measure these IPv6 yeah. things? Yeah. Because if you measure the BGP peering, that's fine. Yeah. But delivering the IPv6 to uh, clients, that's yeah. another story. Yeah, right. yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, regarding to the IPv6 measurement, uh, APLIC uh, Lab has an IPv6 measurement website. Basically, you can look at the uh, IPv6 uh, details there. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? No. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Guangliang. Is there any other question or discussion? Okay. Uh, 
Thank you again to all the speakers and attendees. Now we can close the session. Uh, we will see you in the next uh, stage. Okay, thank you.